everybody. We're back again to talk some more NFL football. We are knee deep into week 14. Week 14 has passed and week 15 is next and there are only 18 weeks. So we're now in the nitty gritty. Uh, we are definitely in the, in the nitty gritty now. You can lose a game now and not make the playoffs. It's really win that. time, win or die. A lot of teams are already basically in playoff season. Yeah. I mean, they've got to win every game on out, or they yes. might not even make the playoffs. So, so this is this is honestly one of my favorite times of, of, of the year. We're, we're getting into the nitty gritty of the NFL, and the bowls are coming up with the college and stuff. So this is plus college basketball has started out. So this is a really festive time of the year. Plus it's Christmas, so the tree. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, what we're going to do, we're going to recap the winners and losers of week 14. We'll do that real quick. And then we've got a dumpster fire of the week again this this week. Man, that's a smelly one. Ah, that's a pretty good one, yeah. Uh, and then we'll jump on into who we think the winners and losers will be of week 15. Let's jump right in. Uh, Thursday night, we had the Steelers at the backings. And the Steelers tried to really come back in the, in the second half. But actually fell short. Yeah, well, they dropped the, they dropped the touchdown pass in the end zone. <laughs> Literally short. Literally short. But, but in the first half, the Steelers played arguably the worst half of football I've seen in a while. Yeah, the Steelers didn't look too good. There was a lot of interceptions, a lot of sacks. Uh, but Big Ben is is a very good quarterback, so he pulled the team together. He guides them to a comeback hey guys, attempt. I'm to, yeah, so uh, again, uh, well, this is Big Ben's last year, so we're going to miss him. We miss all the great quarterbacks. Uh, and uh, you know, this team's just a little old and a little uh, needs to get some youth a little short on talent. Team. Yeah, they, they need some they need some fresh talent in there. Uh, but the Vikings the Vikings did win by eight, which is I, I think what we thought would happen. We got the Falcons at the Panthers. That uh, might be a death blow for Carolina. Yeah, they're uh, they're really really struggling right now. They just fired their offensive coordinator, and nothing was really improved. Yeah, they fired the offensive coordinator, and they still didn't look that good. Of, of course, the Falcons uh, with Cordell Patterson are a pretty good team, but without him, without him, they're not much. They're not that much, no. Honestly, if if uh, Cordell Patterson hadn't played for that game, Carolina would have probably won. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how big of a difference he is. But, but the Falcons are <clears throat> positioning themselves for shockingly a playoff berth and a first round loss, and a middle of the road eight and nine, nine and eight, ten and you know, and then you don't get any good draft picks. So next year, what are you? Uh, you're nine and eight, eight and nine, and you continue that cycle unless you try to scrape up some free agents. Yeah, try to scrape up from some free agents and get up to the 10, 12 win range where you can be good, or just go ahead and go four and thirteen and get some good draft picks. Been in the middle of the road. Is middle of the road. Is middle of the road. Uh, we had the Ravens at the Browns. Uh, this that was is a bit a, of a disaster for Baltimore. Yeah, uh, uh, Lamar Jackson uh, injured and tweaked his ankle. Tweaked, tweaked his ankle. He is day to day with he ankle is, injuries. He is day to day, but honestly, uh, a Lamar Jackson with a bad ankle is like a car with a flat tire. It's still a car. You can still drive it if you want to. It's just not going to do what it should. <laughs> and it'll, it'll maybe a little dangerous. Uh, a big win for Cleveland. A huge win for Yeah, Cleveland uh, still is not in the playoffs. Because but, there's a crap ton of other teams that are 7-6 and six ahead of them. But, honestly, at this point, Cle good Cleveland may win the division. <laughs> Baltimore is dealing with so many injuries. Baltimore, uh, they've lost... I don't know, they lost half the team before they started, and then they've continually lost the other half through the rest of the season from injuries. So, it's going to, Baltimore's struggling a little, but uh, the Browns did win 24-22. Uh, so, uh, that division is going to be interesting. The, the Steelers lost, the Ravens lost, the Bengals lost. So, the Browns were the only one of the four to win. And that makes it very, very uh, close. Yeah, it's all within one or two games of each other. And so, these last, again, these last four or five games at the end of the season are going to be big. There's going to be some teams will make it, some teams not, just because of these last two or three games. Uh, we had the Jaguars at the Titans. The Jaguars are not just a mess off of the field. They're a mess, mess on, on the, the field. field. Yeah, they scored exactly zero points. Who sagged? Nothing. Tennessee beat them 20 to nothing. Uh, and it probably should have been more than that. If Tennessee would have had Henry, it would probably been 40 to nothing. Uh, but, <laughs> I uh, tell you. Yeah, man. So yeah, the Jaguars are dysfunctional. They're yeah, you know, they're dysfunctional at best. At best, <laughs> at best, they're dysfunctional. <laughs> they're uh, like one of those dysfunctional families you see on almost every sitcom. Yes, uh huh. Except for this one's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, the, we That's had... That's what happens when you have Homer Simpson run your franchise. Yes. Uh, we had the Raiders at the Chiefs. The Raiders came out proud, jumped on the logo, stomped on the logo, and lost 48-9. <laughs> Man, they got their butt kicked in their shins. I, don't know, I saw a, I saw a good meme. You know, the first uh, four, I believe, I believe the first four or five games of the year, uh, Kansas City was giving up 30 points. Uh, Ever each, since adding each, Melvin each Ingram, week. they've given up only 10. And we were saying four or five weeks into it, you know, Kansas City, if they don't fix the defense, they are not going to make the playoffs. And here they, we are now. They added Melvin Ingram and I think a, a cornerback too. And their run defense and their whole defense has improved. Their whole defense, yeah. They went from giving up 30 points a game. To 10. To 13 points a game. That's a, that's almost a three times negative differential. Yeah. So now they can score 28 points and still beat you 28 to 13. Well, they were scoring 28 points and losing 31 to 28. Now their defense has improved, and the offense doesn't have to do too terribly much. Exactly. And now with the defense giving Kansas City the ball back for an extra two or three possessions a game, that could give they, score four, they score 48 instead of 31. And that just shows the improvement that the Chiefs made. One player on defense came in, changed the scheme, and, and, now, and now they may be Super Bowl favorites out of the AFC. They Once went from, again. Mm -hmm. Once again, Kansas uh, City makes a move that helps their friends. Whoever wanted to kill Kansas City should have done it earlier, because I think it's too late now. Yes. <laughs> uh, we had the Saints at the Jets. J-E-T-S. -E Jets, 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 Jets. Jets. And, uh, and like I thought, with Kamara coming back to the Saints, uh, he was refreshed and reinvigorated. Offense. And, yeah, they put up yeah, they put up uh, 30 points on Continue the Continue this route and hope the Seahawks lose more, because you have the Seahawks pick. And you can have two top 10 picks in the next the draft. The Jets will probably have two top 10 picks in this draft. So they got a huge chance to swing it. To swing in the fences the next draft class. Yep. Go on, Al. We had the Cowboys at the Redskins. Uh, Cowboys really hammered them really well. The not Kellen Moore. Not Kellen no, Moore. Not the offense. The but defense. Ben Quinn. How many? Well, they got another pick six, didn't they? Kind of at home, kids. Uh, one, two, three, four, five turnovers. Five turnovers the Cowboys got again. Now, now the Cowboys' offense is stuck, stuck in mud. It's Kellen Moorish. <laughs> it's I, I it's given a nickname. I can still hear the clap in the background, even though he's not there anymore. Just because Kellen Moore is like his. Oh, it's his apprentice. I don't know. His, his apprentice. His protege. His apprentice, yes. But yeah, the, the Cowboys still hammered him pretty good. I let him come back a little late, but, but uh, still but beat him. Dan Quinn is Dan Quinn, and his defense the is Cowboys, ferocious. If the Cowboys offense can pull it together the last four weeks, then the they'll be, go far. They will be dangerous. If not, they'll, they'll, they, they might go out in the first round of the playoffs again. But not to fear, the Cowboys, Dallas is a huge free agency destination. Yes. If Jerry wants to go for it. He, that he, he could, will. He could. It, it wouldn't hurt to pick up another offensive weapon just to throw a spark in it. Yeah. And maybe another offensive coach. <sighs> yeah. Uh, we had the Seahawks at the Texans. One one team is very much disappointed all year, the Seahawks. And uh, one team that was expected to suck all year, the Texans has. They finally suck. Yeah. They yeah they they started out like maybe man, man, Texas might. No, but no. it was fool's goal. It was fool's goal. Yeah, look at look at this. Other, no, I suck. They suck. Yeah, uh, when you uh, when you lose by twenty points to a bad Seahawks team, that's the worst <laughs> team that Pete Carroll's ever coached there. Yes, that was that's pretty bad. Now I love Russ Wilson. I think again, again, I think he's one of the uh, top quarterbacks in there. I think they just got a bad coordinator in there. To yeah, be honest. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, they've got a great offensive scheme. They, great weapons on great, every side. Great, yeah, great weapons, maybe not a good offensive scheme. The maybe, offensive scheme They don't is utilize if, something. They don't that utilize the And again, talent, honestly, no. I don't think their offensive line is good. It's what it needs to be. It's been bad for years. Yeah. And they haven't uh, tried. They've tried to fix it, but it's not uh, working. No, Russ is a good running quarterback, but he shouldn't have to run every time to save his life. He should get a, <laughs> you know, a few... Keep him throwing the life preserver. When you've got Lockett and Metcalf out there running uh, and a good tight end, you shouldn't have to run for to your, run life, for your play. life. But yeah, you probably should send the tight end in there to block. Yeah, but it doesn't matter either. I guess uh, we had the Lions at the Broncos. This and... is the whole game. Take the pistol, load it up, Western style. 
bang to the foot. <laughs> yep, they shot themselves in the foot. The Lions did that over and over how many, and over. How many turnovers? How many uh, miscues, balls out of bounds, stepped on something? I mean, they, Just pure incompetence. They've screwed up about every way you could screw up a game. Uh, <laughs> and and after winning last week, you were talking, I don't know. They just, no, they, the Detroit Lions, they're still trying to get their way to the first pick, the savior of the franchise. They're going to be 1-15-1 and one probably at the end of the year. At least, you know, they snapped it. They sort of boxed in that 15 losses with a one on either side of it. <laughs> it's satisfying, though. One, it is one, 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 and one. One, one, five, one. It's satisfying. It is, yes. But the Broncos needed the, that win. The, the Broncos did need that win. Yeah, 38 to 10. They're still in the hunt, too. So if they the next like few weeks, the next few weeks, make, we'll make or break them, too. Uh, we had the Giants at the Chargers. The, this was an M&M week. The Chargers that showed their talent showed their talent. Yes, they looked. And they, kicked they the looked dog really crap well. out of the Giants like they're supposed to at home. Yes, the Giants again. The Giants are dealing with the in injuries. And Jason also. Garrett isn't, even though Jason Garrett's long gone. Yeah, right now. Jason Garrett's there, but there's, there's still the echoes. You can still hear the clapping down the hallway. If they, the unless they hire a new offensive coordinator, will those claps stop? I don't. I don't. I don't I, I, it takes I, I, a good I, medical visit to the doctor <laughs> to stop yeah. the Jason Garrett syndrome. Yes, uh, yes, it's clapping does. endlessly in the ears. <laughs> yes, all you'll hear. But I think. Uh, about, I think that with the injuries, I think the Giants are pretty much done this year. No matter what, uh, they're going to shoot for next year. We had the 49ers at the Bengals. Fantastic game. Jamar Chase uh, and George Kittle exploded mm -hmm. for multiple 100 yards. Yes, both of those. Uh, George, George Kittle is a man. He's a boy. He is, he's a big boy. He's a. Did you see that catch he made? That's freaking to, insane. To, to cap the game, it's crazy. <laughs> he's Superman. He's a tight end, and he's Superman to catch. He single handedly is trying to save the 49ers. He did. He saved that game. I mean, it was him. <laughs> if if he would have got an injured third quarter, that'd have lost by ten. He was. But he's, he's that, that wasn't much. just him. Jamar Chase was making his impact felt. Jamar Chase for the Bengals looked very good too. I felt sorry for the Bengals because that took the Bengals from first place to out of the playoffs. That's Look, an oucher. How's that for one game stretch? That's an oucher. First place in your division, out of the playoffs, one loss. One yeah. and in overtime, it went to overtime. You lose in overtime and you go from first place in your division to out of the playoffs. That's insanity. That's crazy. That's NFL football. <laughs> uh, we had another overtime game. We had the Bills at the Buccaneers. Another just fantastically played game. The oh. Bills struggled the whole first half. They, uh, uh, how, how's this for a, a re, uh, reflection? Uh, the first half, Tampa Bay 24, Buffalo 3. The second half, Buffalo 24, Tampa 3. <laughs> Each team scored 24 and a half and 3 and a half. And it ended up tied and went to overtime. And, and then Tom Brady tortured and then, the Bills like and then, he usually does. And then Tom Brady got the ball and... Tortured the Bills like tortured he usually the Bills. does. Yeah, yeah. Between uh, Brady and Belichick, they just take turns kicking the crap out of the Bills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably thought that this was the Bills' year, but man, they need a running game, dude. They can't rely on just Josh Allen running the ball over and over. They need, they need a legit running back. A, a legit run And another wide receiver wasn't hurt. I mean, they've got some good ones. They got Emmanuel Sanders and Stephon Diggs, as usual. But they do have Cole Beasley. Uh, they need just one running back. They need a horse running back, yeah. Imagine if there was a McCaffrey on that team. They would win 12 games, or at least 13. Yeah, so and so, that's really what they need. Uh, but the Bucks won it in overtime. That was because a fantastic Tommy game. Because Tommy Boy... Fun fact, mm -hmm. touchdown pass number 700 for Tom yes, Brady. Yes, the touchdown pass in overtime, the winning touchdown pass. Was number seven hundred for his season. I mean, his his career. It'd be crazy for a season for his career. Yeah, you gotta well, give it to the man. You gotta give, you gotta it, to give it to the, it to man, the man, man because that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. For him. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the man, we had the Bears at the Packers. The Bears, Bears that the Bears tried. They the the Bears wanted to win this one. But the power of Aaron Rodgers passed. No. The ghost of Aaron Rodgers passed. Have you seen Ebenezer Scrooge? Have yeah. you seen that story? Yes. With, a Christmas Carol, yeah, where he like the bears are visited by the ghosts past, the ghost of Brett Favre, the ghost of Aaron Rodgers, the <laughs> yeah. ghost of Bart Starr. Yes, yes, that is that is it. The past, the present, and the future. There's probably a future bear. Uh, there's probably a future Packer quarterback now <laughs> that's like four years old going. I'm gonna kick the crap out of the Bears when I get older. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what uh, what uh, Rodgers is like five. Uh, 
Uh, so what, 16 and 5 now against uh, the Bears? Like 20, 27, 27 five, and 5. Or so. I don't know. He, the Bears have snuck in five wins over the past uh, eight years or whatever. 18 years against the <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. Uh, but anyway, Talking about yeah. annual buck kicking, even though that's a historic rivalry. Yeah, they won by 15. It was a pretty much a, a good buck kicking. Uh, and then Monday Night Football, another fantastic. Man, we had some good games this week. The Rams at the Cardinals. The Rams got a win they needed. I thought the Cardinals, starting out the game, the Cardinals looked pretty good. I thought, man, this is, they're going to take care of the Rams. Because the Rams are sort of short. They're sort of like the, the Chargers, too. They're a trail mix. You never know what you're going to get each week. You but, never know if they're going to jail. They got them this week, and the Cardinals, all three of their losses this year have been at home. Yeah, and the, they're, they are undefeated on the road. How's this for a one-game swing, too? They went from first place in the conference with a, for, for the, with a first round bye to the third. To third See, place with one loss. Down to the Packers and down to the Bucks. Yeah. So they might end up having to go to L.A. now and play if it ends up first and third again. Well, the, the, their record is seven zero on the road. They're better on better. the road. They're better on the road. Yeah, but but that was another fantastic game. The Rams actually pulled that one out, and that's it. That is our recap of the winners and losers of Week Fourteen. Now we will talk about our weekly dumpster dumpster fire. fire. The dumpster fire of the week. This is Marty. It Say hi to Marty. Sunshine. Or, uh, yeah, it's, there's some there's some extra heat on this dumpster fire. Check it out. Dumpster fire of the week. Yeah. And our dumpster fire of the week is... The Jacksonville Jaguars. Loser! You're a loser! Jacksonville is... A drama-filled cesspool. A, it's a, it's just, it is a soap opera. <laughs> it's a soap opera about some people trying to play football, but they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard all the crap that's been going around about Urban Meyer? I mean, the man goes to a strip club and... and hangs out with uh, some ladies. Hang, hang, hangs out with some... Lady friends. Even though he's married. And then what's the, the last one, he's... He uh, called his assistant coaches losers. He called his assistant coaches losers. You're a loser. How is that Lo supposed to... Who's there? How is oh, that supposed to build team morale? And then also, the his the Jaguars ex-kicker came out now and said... He kicked him in the shin. No, no, Evermeyer kicked him, so you kicked the kicker. What you kind of nonsense... What, what kind of team is he trying to run? I don't How do know. you run a team with all that drama? And then they play a football game this week and, and score. Zero points. <laughs> Zero points. <laughs> so yeah, it's a dumpster fire soap opera about some people trying to play football but suck. <laughs> it's nothing like, like the my nothing like the Florida heat. Yeah, nothing like uh, something's getting to them. Yeah, you know, that's gotten to the mind or it's gotten to his mind. Or, or Trevor Lawrence. He's yeah. subjected to all that nonsense. Yeah. Uh, uh, didn't he make – I heard that Trevor Lawrence made a comment about the offense too, like, like the running back should be getting more touches. Like Even though the coaches are neglecting the running getting, game. Yeah, so some of the players, like the leader quarterback, is getting a little vocal about how things are not doing, done the way that – They should. They should be done. So your guard thing uh, is on fire, and I wouldn't – it wouldn't surprise me to see a big mushroom cloud – down that way here within the next uh, month of the, of the owner firing everybody in there. <laughs> I, I mean, how do you run an organization with all those problems? With yeah. the coach going to the club and then calling everyone in the organization losers. I don't know. It's hard enough to play football. When you don't have and, any relationships. And win. Then, you, then to have a soap opera drama field to, and then have to deal with that too. So, yeah. The Jacksonville is definitely our dumpster fire of the week. All right, let's go ahead and jump into week 15. This actually starts uh, some Saturday football. Yep, Saturday we, ball. It's special edition. We have Saturday NFL football this week. You know why? Because the college has passed. And so, now they're trying to fill slots. So why not throw some NFL on Saturday? Doesn't break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, first of all, let's jump into Thursday night. Thursday night is a, another We've got game changers every everywhere this week. We got the Charger. We got the Chargers taking on the Chiefs. Battle for the AFC West. The Chargers beat the Chiefs at home this year. Yes, once. Uh huh. If uh, the Chiefs are going to the Chargers this time, so do the Chargers make it a two for one? I'm going Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are in fuego right now, and they're ready for the postseason. I think they are ready for the postseason. The Chiefs are favored by three. I would eat that alive. I love that right there. I think nice I think Kansas City is going to be about 10. 
or more. Wow. I think, wow. I think this is a 37 to 21, 24 game. Wow. I think, yeah. That's a hyped up game on Thursday. I think uh, the, hey, the Chiefs are averaging giving up 13 points. How do you? Last do? week they gave up nine against the How Raiders. How do you do? So it, let's say they give up twice as much as they've been giving up, 26. But they score 48 like they did against the Raiders last week. That's a 22-point win. I really think it's going to be a 10 to 15-point win in this one. I'm thinking maybe 13 points. So, but anyways, I do like me some Chiefs there on the uh, on the road. We've got the the Raiders Saturday night. Sa I mean Saturday football. We got the Raiders at the Browns. Big game. Another big game. Uh, whoever loses this game is out of the playoffs. Just go ahead and say it and, and, and be done with it. It's going to be like virtually it's going to be virtually impossible to come back and get back in unless you win out. But if you I lose think, this game, you're probably not going to win out. I think the Raiders are in a tailspin. I think the Browns will win. I do think too. The, uh, the Raiders are actually favored by one and a half, so we're, we're catching a point and a half on that one too. So I take the Browns plus one and a half. I will. We got uh, the Saturday night game: Patriots at the Colts. Another big Man. game. It's another huge game. The Patriots uh, are in control of the AFC. They are, but but if, but but if they lose this one, then Buffalo goes to New, New, New England for the division for the league. division crown. So that's how big this game is. If the Patriots lose this, then they could lose the division. If the Colts lose this, if the, the, Colts Colts are, are, the Colts are the sixth seed right now. If yeah. they lose this, they're going to tumble down. They're going to tumble down and might not even be in the playoffs, depending on how the other ones go. So, again, this is a, another huge game. Uh, Indy is favored by two and a half. I'll take New England. I think I'm going to take plus two and a half there, too. New, Eng New England's just been good lately, man. They, they are. And because of one man, the hooded the, mastermind. Yeah, the emperor. Emperor's back there, and the behind the scenes going, <laughs> just like I planned. <laughs> He's good, though. Uh, we got the Panthers at the Bills. I'll pick Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo has got to bounce back, yeah. They got they can't lose to a Panthers team that no. I would say is struggling. They are, the Panthers are really rich really struggling right now, yeah. Buffalo's favored by 10 and a half. That's a, that's a lot of points, but I'll probably still take Buffalo. Uh, we got the Cardinals at the Lions. The Cardinals should win this by ease. Yeah, I think the Lions thirteen. I think I'd take that thirteen. And with and with a win next week, the Cardinals are in the playoffs. Yes, that would be the first team to punch their ticket. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, we got the Jets at the Dolphins. This is a big J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. The Jets can play spoiler. If the Jets win this game, Dolphins are out of the playoffs. Oh, oh! <laughs> but if the Dolphins win this game, then that's what six in a row they've won, and they're on, and they're on a roll. I think the Dolphins are going to spoil some money season this year. Yeah, the so, Dolphins still play New England, and I think they still play Buffalo. I think. Yeah, they're going to spoil. They're going to spoil somebody because the Dolphins are not bad right now. The Dolphins I, I are think, on a roll. Right I think. Now. The, I think the Dolphins will beat the Jets. Uh, the line. Uh, the line's pretty big. Uh, the line's ten. I don't know if it'll be by ten. Uh, I would probably honestly probably take the Jets plus ten, but I think Miami's gonna win the game. The more the more uh, you continue down the stretch, the better your future will be. Yep. Because the more you have of draft picks and good choices, mm -hmm. your franchise will continue to grow. Just don't make those mediocre choices. You do not want to end up eight and nine or nine and eight. That is <laughs> Death Valley. You're, at least the losing team. At least the the teams with a lot of losses can at least get some draft picks. I would rather be three and thirteen than nine and eight. Well, three and thirteen, you can you can make some changes. You can you got some high draft picks, and you can get better. Nine and eight, you there's not a, what are you, you're, you got middle of the road coaches and middle of the road team, middle of the road draft picks coming. You're middle of the road. You're not going <laughs> to stink, but you're not going to be good. No, you're going to uh, be stuck in neutral. Yep. So honestly, uh, if I was the Jets, I would be okay with losing. You end up if you could end up three and fourteen for the for the for, for the year, you're gonna, you could earn a five top five draft pick in a franchise and, player and grab another one from the from Seattle. And you can grab another one from Seattle that you got from Jamal Adams. Yes. So mm, mm, mm. Uh, we got the Cowboys at the Giants. I think the Cowboys take care of the Giants pretty good. Dan Quinn's gonna crush. Giants are uh, str struggling, tumbling a little bit right now and with Dan a, a, a lot of injuries. Dan Quinn is going to crush the Giants. Uh, not Kellen Moore, mm -mm. but Dan Quinn is yeah. going to crush the Giants. Yeah, I think the, the Cowboys are favored by ten and a half. I, I, I think they pull out against the Giants. We got Washington at the Eagles. 
Six and seven, six and seven. Whoever loses this game. It's a huge, huge, huge. Can I emphasize? Huge. Game. Washington is what? The seventh seed right now? Washington's the seventh seed. Philadelphia's right on their tail. Mm -hmm. So whoever loses this game is going to have eight losses. <laughs> and probably miss the playoffs. Miss the playoffs. Eight or eight and nine. Not yes. getting a good draft pick at all. Middle, one of these is going to be a middle of the road, and one of these is going to be making the playoffs. Uh, the Eagles are favored by seven. I don't like that. Do you want to pick Washington? I'm going to take Washington, Washington plus seven. Uh, I'm not sure if Washington's going to win. I almost think they might. But seven points is a lot as good as Washington's been playing lately, you know? Uh, we got the Titans at the Steelers. Mm -mm -mm. That's a bigger game for Pittsburgh than it is for Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee, Tennessee needs to keep rolling while they get people healthy. I mean, it is important to them. But if the Steelers lose this... Bye bye. It's over. Yeah. Go back to making irons in your own iron mills. Yeah, yeah. The Steelers are six and six and one right now. You go to six, seven and one, and the best you could do would be nine, seven and one, Bomber. or nine, uh, eight, seven and one. Bomber, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, nine, seven and one. Nine, seven and one because there's seventeen games now. That's so, just slightly above average. So, and that's you winning out, winning the last three. Yeah. So. How do you do? Uh, Tennessee's favored by one and a half. Uh, I honestly probably think Tennessee, Tennessee should win it. Yeah, Tennessee should. The Tennessee win. So I'll probably take the minus they one and a half Mike on Grable, Tennessee. They got Mike the hooded genius's disciple. He's probably the closest to the Belichick the disciple of anybody that's come out of that tree so far. He is. He just knows how to, I mean, he'll take a bad team or a semi-okay team. And give them a winning year. And they'll win, you know. With, so. Win with very little talent sometimes. Yeah. Uh, our, our Super Bowl of the week, the one that everybody's wanting to see, the Texans at the Jaguars. That's a dumpster of the week. That's the toilet bowl. That's the toilet bowl. That is, we're, we are getting into bowl season. <laughs> that is the Charmin <laughs> Toilet Bowl. Brought to you by... Cottonell flushable wipes. Well, something, yes. It is just a horrible, man. Uh, Texas at the Jaguars. Jaguars are favored by three and a half. I'd probably take the Jaguars. The Texans are just crashing completely, but so are the Jaguars. It's I like mean, watching a car crash over and over with two it, teams. I don't know. A car crash is more interesting than this. Um, I, it's just, this is, I don't know. It's pretty bad. Car crash the game. Yes. Yes, it is. We got the Bengals at the Broncos. Another huge game. I'm going to pick Cincy. Whoever takes this L is their seventh loss. loss. I'm going to pick Cincy. So, again, the best you could do winning out would be 10-7 if you lose this game. I will pick Cincy. I'm picking Cincy, too. I don't think Cincy's going to lose two, two, two in a row. They lost to a 49er team that was desperate. Yeah, the, Bron the Broncos are favored by two and a half, so we're catching two and a half on that one, too. So, Cincy plus two and a half. We got the Falcons at the 49ers. We got another big game. Oh, I think the 49ers. Yeah, if the Falcons lose this again. Bye-bye. And if the 49ers win, they're going to solidify themselves. Uh, if the 49ers lose this, that's their seventh loss. And, yeah. And then they're back down to the seventh seed, probably. Yeah, probably. With a, with a chance to miss it if you lose another one. So yes, you would, that's crazy. So you would have to win out. If you lose this one, 49ers, then you've got to win out. That's the only thing that's going to save you. So, man, these games are so good. Uh, I'm going to take the 49ers, though. I think they win it pretty easy, maybe about 10-plus points. We got Seattle at the at the Rams. The Rams get win number 10. Yeah, the Rams are flavor, favored by 4.5. I'll, I'll take the Rams. I'm not the Seattle's not going to win two in a row. Uh, I mean, they don't, they don't get the Texans every week, so <laughs> they're not going to win two in a row. Uh, we got the Packers at the Ravens. Uh, we got the Packers. Uh, 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 uh. I'll take the Packers. I'm going to take the Packers uh, just for the main reason that Lamar Jackson, uh, injury even if he injury. even if he starts and he plays, he's, he's not going to be as efficient. He's, he's on a ginger ankle. He's and, on a ginger ankle, and a big part of his game is running. Is running, or at least being mobile. I mean, he'll run to the side and throw. Which, if you got the bad ankle, it's a little hard to do that. So again, I'm going to take the Packers. Packers are only favored by five and a half. That's uh, another one of mine. 10 plus point games. So, might want to take the Packers big, might want to take the Chiefs big. Uh, the Sunday night game, we got the Saints at the Bucks. Do you think uh, that pirate ship's going to sail? I think so. The Saints are dealing with so many injuries. But what's t t Tom's Achilles heel? The Saints. The Saints. I don't think that the Saints win, but the line's 11. I'm taking the Saints plus 11 just because Tom struggles there. 
Now, again, he may go, I'll show them and beat them 50 to 3 but this week. But if you go with trends, you, you got to think that the Saints will keep it under 10. Probably. Like a 34 to 27 type game, maybe. And then Monday Night Football. It's a big game for the Vikings. We got the Vikings Bears. If the Vikings lose this, they're out. But they need to win. They, they desperately, they've need desperately to win. got to win. They've already got seven losses. They're in playoff mode right now. They've got to win out. They've got to win those last four. And now they need to beat the Bears, and I think they might. I think the Vikings should beat the Bears. Because this is Matt Nagy we're talking about. Yeah, it is in Chicago. Uh, the Bear, uh, Minnesota is still favored by three and a half. Oh, I think that's probably about right. So uh, that is it. That is our football, NFL football for week 14 and week 15. We, we hope you had some fun with us. Uh, enjoy the holiday season. We'll, we'll uh, do our special Christmas edition next week. Uh, but be sure and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave us a groovy comment, baby button. share us with your friends, and hit the groovy baby button over somewhere. Other than that, we'll see you next week. See you next week.